These are the same material. They both have a durometer of 95A, but for some reason, this one can only stand up to a jug of milk sitting on top of it, but this one can stand up to a motorcycle. So in this video, we're gonna test and show why that is. So these are TPU cubes, and each one of these cubes is 30 millimeters to a side. We put them inside of a compression rig to show how different infills behave and how they affect a part when you're printing with it. This is really useful for applications such as shoe insoles or if you're trying to change how a particular part behaves. You might be making motorcycle armor, you might be making an electrical enclosure, but how you design and how dense the infill is really changes the properties of the part even though the material is exactly the same. So let's go ahead and dive right in and see the test of these different infills. First up is 10% infill, a very low infill, common. It's a standard grid infill at 45 degrees, but you can see that it basically buckles immediately, so there's never really a point where there's a final loss. It's just such a weak material. It does seem to kind of hover around 40 to 60 newtons, about 50 newtons or so, but again, you can see that it's crumpling and building up on itself, so basically it just settles as there's more pressure put onto it. And we continue to press each one of these samples until the load cell maxes out because again, there's no clear failure when the CPU actually goes south. But once we hit that maximum threshold at about five to 6,000 Newtons, we're gonna release the load. And what's really interesting here is that the part didn't really fail. You have some permanent deformation on the side, but it's not terrible. Now moving on to 20% infill, we'll do something similar. You can see, yes, the power building, the previous one crumpled at about 50 Newtons. This is sitting at around 150 before finally you have a buckle in the outer walls and that infill just starts to completely collapse. But it remains and maintains a force at about 150 Newtons before going into just full deformation where now we're just compressing it and it's resisting the compression until we max out the load cell that we're using. But 20% infill was about three times stiffer than the actual 10% infill, which is a very interesting situation. Doubling the infill effectively tripled the stiffness of the part, which is an interesting property of TPU. It is flexible when you have low infill, but you can make it stiffer. And we'll see this here with the 30% infill. Here we're going up, you can see much more rigidity, it's kind of collapsing, and finally we have sort of a buckle, but it's at 400 to 450 Newtons, and maxed out at about six, before it finally crumpled, and then it fell back down to about 350. But here in this case, you can see that we basically stiffened up the part about 3x from the previous 10%. It went from 150 Newtons to 450 to 600 Newtons before full collapse. And then of course fills all the way up. And when it returns, since you have so much more infill, there's really not permanent deformation, the deep bends, the creases that happen with like the 10% infill. Now going up to 50, we go ahead, see the compression, expect a lot of good things out of this one. Of course, you can see all the cells starting to stretch and pull along the main 45 degree angle stress line, but it's holding together really well. And clearly, yeah, no major failure. But now you can see it's leveling out at about 2000 and the previous one had leveled out at about 400 to 600 or so. Then you get into full compressibility and it stops. But let's go ahead and watch the return on this one. If you let that settle for a little bit, you probably wouldn't know it was ever squashed. And this is a magic ability of TPU. Now 100%. We saw too much growth in how fast things were filling in, so we just went straight for the 100% to show what solid TPU is able to do. And basically, it, it does nothing. It squashes slightly, but then you have no idea that it was ever under a 6,000 Newton load, which is a pretty big deal. So TPU is really a super material. Unlike most other 3D printed materials, since it is so resilient, you're able to compress it and squash it in all kinds of different ways and still have good rebound to where it will go back to its original shape so long as you don't really, really squash it. But it's really useful because you're able to get different material properties from the same material. 95 TPU printed with a low infill is very soft and squishy, but the same TPU printed with a high infill now becomes rigid and as hard as a tire to where you have something very durable, stiff, and hard. So even though it's soft as filament, you can turn it into something hard later on. 
it is something to be aware of when designing parts because TPU has all kinds of other, other advantages. It is very highly UV resistant, it's very chemically resistant, and it's just really durable. I mean, you can see from the video how we were able to squash these things to complete compression, but they still rebound back and work fine. So there, it's a really flexible and durable material that people don't often use very often, but it's something we use really commonly. And if you're able to use TPU for a particular part, it can be a really good option. If we were calling out to filament manufacturers and some of the stuff that was being done, it should be made even stiffer because TPU is a fantastic material that you're able to control to create all types of different products while using the exact same material. And this, this is is only possible with 3D printing because you're able to control these microstructures, this infill, these small components of the actual part itself so that it behaves differently and you can create these type of compliant pieces or super rigid pieces. This has never been possible with manufacturing before and it's a real superpower of 3D printing. And if you have your final product that you wanna do this in, you can use mass production printing like what we do here at Slant3D to crank out tens to hundreds of thousands of these. We have lots of other testing videos on the channel. We test different infill styles, different infill densities of all types of different materials. So do check some of those out over here and like and subscribe and comment on any other types of tests that you'd like to see us do to see how 3D printing really changes how parts and materials can behave and be made. Have a great day, everybody.